All right, what's up, everybody?、Uh, this is Marmavex Forever, and welcome to the first episode of this new LCD、uh, programming series. So, what you're looking at right now is a Vex Robotics、um, LCD display screen. It's、uh, 50 bucks each, and、uh, my personally, I had to go and convince. Uh, I had to beg my mentor to buy me,、uh, to 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 buy our team a few of these. Fifty fifty bucks each is not quite cheap in terms of a VEX add-on. Motor just fifteen dollars, and C channels are really not that expensive. But this is something pretty expensive right here. Uh, so, however, the、uh, the reason I begged for my mentor to buy but buy my team a few because is because I know this is really powerful. Without using any of your regular digital analog ports, this one thing, this one LCD display, is capable. It's essentially equal to infinite amount of LED lights and three bumper inputs and a display screen. And、uh, yeah, so basically, it's really powerful. It, it can do a lot of things、uh, and make your robot look really neat and be really, really, really helpful without wasting a lot of your sensor points. And、um, in my Skyrise program, in my Skyrise program, I basically I built a full powered、uh, a a、um, fully powerful. Excuse me, this is, yes. Basically, I built a fully powerful and functional, completely、uh, LCD-based、uh, robot debug stream.、Uh, let's go find it. Code is just too much autonomous. So basically, in Skyrise, I built a, this robot debug stream right here. Driver control view values. I built this completely functional debug stream、um, that includes like how many tasks? That has like. Twelve display screens. That's gonna allow me to do whatever I want to do. Anything other than changing the values and changing codes,、uh, which you have to basically do、um, directly on Robot C.、Uh, I mean Robot C. If you don't want to,、uh, I mean, do some、uh, mess around with the memory. Whatever that is not changing codes. For instance, like swapping autonomous in your driver control, testing out autonomous. Uh, seeing、um, your battery values, seeing all of your、uh, the, uh, sensor values, seeing whatever values you want to see,、uh, doing some simple control, whatever you wanted to do with my debug stream, I was able to do it completely independent from the computer and just with the three buttons and a LCD display screen, which is something that I was really proud of. And、uh, at World Championship, I showed this to a bunch of teams, and they were like, "Wow, this just blew my mind." And、uh, uh, <laughs> and yes, I was really happy about that because the, I mean, this thing doesn't just look cool; it is really powerful. For instance, what I can do is right here. For instance, say,、uh, I mean, for our lift, is not very well designed. I have to say, it's not the best lift in the world. Not like the、uh, I mean, disco bus lifts or some of the best lifts in the world. But our double reverse six bar. Uh, we didn't have high strain shafts, so that the shafts were kept bending under the immense pressure of the um uh I, I mean uniform tension over bends. So we had to replace the shafts like once, two weeks or, th- or or three、uh, or three weeks or so without putting so that we don't put too much pressure on the motors. So when you're doing that, we have potentiometers on the lift. So you see, I have a display potentiometer, a、uh, line of code. We have potentiometers on the lift, and The、um, issue is that、uh, I mean, when you take out the shaft and you put it back, we, we have the potentiometer、um, basically monitoring the height of the lift. If the lift is too high, just、uh, disable it or something. The,、uh, the the issue is that if we don't know where the or、uh, what what the potentiometer's reading is after you swap a shaft, the, the program's probably not gonna work, or the reading's probably.、Uh, Gonna be off, or you might even break potentiometers like what I did with my first、uh, scissor lift robot.、Um, so w- with this feature, basically, th- this makes things a whole lot easier. You don't need a computer. What you do is that you swap your screen to the fourth screen, and then it displays the both of the poten-、uh, both potentiometer values on both sides. And essentially, what we do when we're replacing the shaft is that we look at the LCD screen's value. And we put in the shaft.
so that we can make sure that the value is just right and just a lot of things like that made things a lot easier like when you just when when robot see and your when you uh, when your computer and your um uh, and your robot just don't hook up when you are just going to compete and something goes wrong you don't know what's going on wrong you don't have a laptop with you just at there by the arena or little features like i want a zero i want to uh, i, I want to reinitialize gyro because after i turn on robot on the field immediately i'm going into competition i saw that Oh my god, I forgot to keep the robot completely uh, stale when I'm initializing the robot. What do I do? How do I know whether the gyro is insanely drifting or not? Uh, what do I do in this case? How do I reinitialize the gyro? I don't want to restart the robot because I already connected the field control. Everything's just messy. In this case, you can just... Um, I mean, all of a lot of these little things you can easily program on the LCD and... Um, also, I noticed the, that there's this skills gap. I don't know. I, I, I don't know whether I should call it skills gap of LCD or not. I um, see some pretty advanced uh, LCD uh, features and uses, like uh, in um, in uh, uh, 2915A. In their review video, saw some pretty neat features of timing and stuff. Uh, uh, with their LCD and uh, on Vex Forum just a, a few years ago, Mr. Pierman, ha I mean, has been doing a bunch of pretty advanced LCD programming and uh, using the LCD to demonstrate some of the pro programming principles and, uh, and uh, the uh, variable types. Those are pretty advanced stuff. While you, if you actually want to go in there and learn something useful in competition, you go to Robotsy's uh, help files or you go to Robotsy website, things are very basic. It's just a very basic um, LCD autonomous selection, uh, a very basic display battery voltage thing, and they don't even tell you how to display sensor values or anything other than that. Uh, I mean, more advanced than that. Um, and uh, Mr. Pierman has these, uh, and Cody, I, I, I believe uh, Cody also did some of the LCD interface codes, but uh, those things are just codes, and it's, it's kind of difficult for beginners to start learning. and. Um, I mean, for instance, uh, my, my team members, after I left, they asked me about programming. I kind of had trouble, like, they just basically asked me, like, what, um, Martin, how do you program this? I mean, how do you build your DUX stream on the robot? I was like, and it's, it's, it's not something I can, I, I can explain in, like, two words, but it's not that difficult either. So that, and, uh, well, I don't think a, a beginner to Robot C can understand this thing just by looking at a bunch of codes that others put online either. So that I feel that there's a gap between really advanced stuff and really basic stuff. And, uh, I hope that by doing my series of videos, I can teach you or you can learn a little bit more, uh, of uh, LCD debugging stuff from me. Not any advanced stuff, not any intricate programming, not any intricate logic just most straightforward building a full fully functional and powerful um robot debug stream and operating uh interface with your lcd display screen without taking up any more sensor ports without uh doing uh, any work on the computer just uh, just build a uh powerful lcd interface uh that's gonna allow you to select autonomous swap autonomous c sensor values initialize your gyro and clear out your encoder values and all sort of stuff like that that you would have otherwise uh, uh i mean been forced to do on the computer so uh this episode i'm just gonna show you a little bit about this is the uh these are all the functions that i created just um sending the values uh to the um uh, s sending the values t to the LCD, and uh, I, I like the way I, I, I kind of like the way I do the interface. Uh, and certainly, you can do your interface uh, other ways, but I think my way is pretty easily understood because when I was writing this, I, I didn't know much about robotsy. <laughs> I just look up the codes and I just started typing. And also, one more thing to say is that um, LCD programming is really something that's pretty unique in robotics programming because when you're doing your PID or when you're doing your autonomous, you always, uh, I mean, when you're tuning your PID controller, you always have to have this robot with you. You always have to uh, have robot C or robot 
by your hand right there. Uh, you you always have your uh, you, you must have your hands on your robot if you want to write autonomous if you want to test out values if or if you want to develop more codes but LCD codes LCD display codes is the only sort of code you can work on without a robot without robot C as long as I mean because it doesn't require any measurements or values input or tuning as long as you think. Uh, as long as you think you know these codes, you think these codes are correct, um, then we'll, uh, uh, we'll, then you will be able to, uh, I mean, write them uh, without the robots, even just in just Notepad. And as long as you got you get your syntax correct, you put it in there, it's gonna work. And uh, that's a, another part I loved robotsy programming because in my school's library when I didn't have robotsy, basically what I did is just I sat there, I looked up the codes, I, uh, I looked up the user functions from robotsy, display LC numbers, stuff like that, and I just start, started typing. I just started building the the, the um, entire debug stream on my own, which is actually pretty cool. And uh, I really like that. Uh, so it's just... This is first episode, just uh, introducing some what I'm gonna do in this series. Uh, if you want to start, you can skip directly to the next episode where I'm gonna actually start uh, writing the most basic programming structure. All right, so this is Smart of X Forever. This is the new series, new um, uh, new playlist that I want to start because the previous uh, PID playlist I felt that i was pretty satisfied with that i'm definitely gonna do some more updates new more new features on that but uh for right now i think i might take a break from uh, all the pid stuff and uh, do a brand new series that's interesting from another perspective all right this is marmot vex forever and uh, i will see you in the next video